In this video, we're gonna try running this three phase AC motor on single phase power with this VFD. And so the first thing we're gonna do is just try to hook power into the VFD, single phase power into the VFD, see the LEDs light up, maybe scroll through, through some parameters, just kind of check out and make sure everything looks like it's working. And once we do that, we'll hook the motor into the VFD and see if we can't bump the motor with the keypad on the VFD alone. So like no external control source or anything, just the keypad on the VFD to try to control the motor. Then if we get that far, we should be able to hook into these control pins with an external controller and see if we can't control the motor. So, and we're only gonna try to do three things. Um, in my case, I'm gonna be using this Centroid Acorn CNC controller to try to do three things. So the first is gonna be to send a digital signal from this controller to the VFD to tell it to turn the motor on. The second one will be an analog signal to control the RPM of the motor or the frequency of the VFD. And the last thing we're gonna to try to do is just try to have the VFD actually send a digital signal to the acorn in the event of a fault or something like that. So if something happens with the spindle, because my uh, idea is to have that motor or a motor like it swapped out and controlling the spindle on this mill. So if something goes wrong with the spindle, I need to send a signal from the VFD to the controller to let it know that something's gone wrong and it needs to put everything in kind of an emergency alarm state. But if you're using something like a PLC or an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or something, this is all going to be the same or really similar because we're just trying to do three things. You know, we're trying to send a digital signal, send an analog signal and send a, a digital signal from the VFD into the controller to let it know there's a fault. And we're going to do this in a way where I'm just kind of rolling video and taking you guys along as I'm doing this for the first time step by step. Because I understand from a high level what these things are supposed to do. I went through the manual a little bit and checked out some of the parameters that I think we're going to have to change to get this all to work. But I'm not 100% sure. I've never done it before. So let's get into it and let's see how far we can get. We've got our leads here. This is 10 gauge, way overkill. And this is the VFD. This is a 10 horsepower VFD. And this is a two horsepower motor. What's extra exciting is I don't even know if this motor works. I'm told it does, but it's been sitting around for a really long time. And hopefully that's all good there. This is the VFD and it is, so it's a 10 horse VFD. And from what I know, um, my understanding is that you can control a three phase motor on single phase if you have double the VFD. So if you have a two horse motor and you have at least, you know, a four horsepower VFD, then you should be good. This specific model is a 10 horsepower or seven and a half kilowatt. And it's actually intended for use with single phase. Um, and maybe I shouldn't say intended, but this model specifically has the option to run on either single phase or three phase. And if you're running on single phase, instead of connecting, you know, three phases, which you don't have, but you just connect the two hots to the R um, terminal and the T terminal, and you leave the S terminal alone. So your your power in goes here. The This is your U, V, and W. So this is where three phase is gonna be going out to the motor. And these two are for a brake resistor, which we're not gonna hook in today or maybe ever. And these here are the control pins. And so I hope that by the end of all of this, we are gonna be using these control pins on this VFD. This VR pin is the pin you send an analog signal to to control the speed of the motor. And then I think by default, the P1 and P2 pins are for, you know, P1 is forward direction, P2 is reverse direction. So if the acorn was able to output minus 10 volts, then both speed and direction could be done on the same analog pin. But because we don't have that in the acorn, we're going to actually have to take up, I think, two of these relays, one to one for P1 and one for P2. So you activate one for clockwise and another one for counterclockwise. And I think that's going to be pretty easy to do with the Centroid Wizard. I haven't even plugged anything in. I'm sure there's going to be more frustrations, but um, let's get going here and see. Now, I've got this little panel on the wall here. This is just a pony panel from my main panel in the basement. And uh, I've got 40 amps up here of uh, 220 volts. Uh, right now, I have it on two breakers. I sort of got two 20 amp breakers. This one runs to my air compressor, and this one runs the mill and the lathe. Now, I never run these... So this is the lathe, it doesn't really get a lot of attention. And uh, this is the mill here. So they both run on that same circuit. And then the air compressor I've actually tucked away into the basement and then I've got the air lines running up 
through the floors here, which is really nice because it makes a heck of a racket. Okay, so we're gonna open that up. We're gonna get in there and we're gonna go ahead and the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna connect the VFD to power. We're gonna keep this thing handy <laughs> just in case. And uh, we're gonna see if the lights turn on and it looks like you know the VFD is running. Once we do that, we'll start taking it a step further and seeing if we can't actually bump the motor just by using the VFD. So when we hook power into the VFD, we're gonna run the UV and W leads over to the junction box. We're gonna make sure it's wired for low voltage. This is a 23460 um, motor. So we'll make sure it's wired up for lower voltage and we'll see if we can't bump it. Um, then we'll kind of take it from there and see if we can't configure the VFD to be listening for signals on the control pins from the Acorn to go ahead and control something. We've got the two hots coming from the breaker. We're also grounded in the panel uh, and neutral isn't connected. So we've got the two hots and a ground connected uh, in the panel. And then we've got the two hots and a ground coming in to the VFD. Now I haven't flipped the breaker yet. We're gonna do that now. Probably a good time to bring this thing closer to me. All right, moment of truth. Let's flip it. All right, well, those are some good sounds. All right, so to connect this motor, it does have a low voltage kind of wiring diagram. And I'm, you know, this viewfinder is so small, I'm not sure that you can see it. But we've got to connect four, five, and six all together, not connected to anything. Then we connect seven and one in one phase, eight and two in the second phase, and nine and three in the third phase. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So all these are numbered. Right now we have seven and four, which means it was wired for high voltage. So we got to redo all this stuff. And we'll be back in a moment here. Okay, and before wiring the motor in, I changed just a few parameters. So there's a parameter that allowed me to set everything back to the factory defaults, which I did. The second one is setting the full load amps on the nameplate of the motor. Uh, which is 5.9 for 5.9 amps for this two horse motor wired at the low voltage setting. Uh, I set the run frequency to 60 hertz and the acceleration and deceleration time. I set both of them to 10 actually because if the motor's not sounding good. I'll have time to shut it down before it gets all the way up to 1800 RPM. Uh, I set the max frequency to 60 hertz and then there's also a bunch of parameters. Well, there's uh, there were three parameters that had to do with the full load amps. So the first one was I set the full load amps in the VFD, which was 5.9, like we said. Then there's another parameter that gave me the percentage overcurrent I'm willing to go, or it's, it's sort of like a trip level. And then there was another parameter that would shut the output side of the VFD off after a certain number of seconds at that output level. So all three of these, I think, have to do with shutting the motor down in an overcurrent situation. I feel safe enough to give this thing a shot, but I don't have it connected to the load side of the VFD yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and be right back. Okay, so the VFD is on. We've got our um, 220 single phase coming in, and then we've got the load side all hooked up to the motor. And we're going to start it up and see what happens here. All right, we're looking good. And there's a setting here where I can go up and take a look at how much current's being drawn, which is neat. So we're drawing 3.1 amps. Let's stop the motor. All right, so I've got FLA is 5.9. Yeah, it climbs over for a second there. And let's start the motor again. And keep our eye on the current. Yeah, so it's high until it reaches 1800 RPM. And this is at 60 hertz. So we're looking real good here, but we're just controlling it with the keypad. So the next step is going to be to mess around with the control pins and see if we can't get the centroid acorn starting and stopping the motor. Okay, so now we've got the VFD hooked into one of the relays 
on the acorn board, I set it as the second relay. And that'll just kick on anytime the G code tells the controller to run the spindle forward. So an M3 command. And then all it's doing is connecting two control pins on my VFD that happens to be the common and the P1. So I can now control the motor through the software. And when I go to manual spindle control and I hit, oh, sorry, get some focus here and I hit the spindle start. We get the motor kicking on, spindle stop. We get the motor kicking off. So we still don't have control of the speed. I haven't at all connected the analog output to anything. Those are the pins that the alligator clips are connected to. That's gonna be the next step. And um, to run the spindle in reverse, I'll have to connect another relay, but I can't think of a time I'm going to do that. This thing's not going to be rigid tapping. I don't know why I'd need it, so I might not do it, but we can control the spindle manually. And what's even better is that the centroid post, anytime I run a program, it posts this, sorry for the glare. I hope you can see that. My viewfinder is so small, but it posts an M3 right here. So the spindle does start before the program runs. This is just a simple program that I'm, we're gonna sort of come in with this contour and like trace this square. I hope you can see that. But it starts, um, it kicks on the spindle. This is 3000 RPM. Now that S3000 doesn't mean anything, but the M3 means something. So let's go and hit cycle start. Okay. Now let's hit cycle start again. I'm going to hit it off screen here. So the second I hit cycle start, the CNC machine starts moving and the spindle kicks on. So it runs the program. And the spindle kicks off. That is really good. Really, really good. So I'm happy with that. Let's try to connect the analog. Oh, and before we start playing with the analog input, it just kind of occurred to me that I want to check if the e-stop shuts down the spindle. So we're going to start that same CNC program we just ran. And uh, we'll go here. We'll hit cycle start. That's great. The machine starts moving and the controller kicks on. Everything's looking good. I'm going to hit the e-stop now and see what happens. Okay. That's awesome. So the CNC machine stopped moving in X, Y, and Z, and the spindle motor kicked out. So that's all good. If we ever have an e-stop, we know that we can stop everything. All right, let's get to the analog stuff. And the idea is that Acorn's supposed to put out anywhere between 0 and 10 volts, depending on how fast the spindle should be spinning. So from what I understand... Um, Let's say your max spindle speed is 3000 RPM. If you have 3000 RPM set in the, in, in, in your program. So if you get a S3000 M3 command, uh, this analog signal will kick out 10 volts because the, the, the analog range or that, that analog output has a range of zero to 10. And if you've defined your maximum as 3000, it should put out 10 volts. If, if you want to run 1500 and your maximum is 3000, it should put out five volts. At least that's my understanding. And that's what we're going to try to test. I'm sort of going to run a program and hope that Acorn is just outputting that analog voltage no matter what. So I haven't changed anything in the Acorn settings. I haven't told it to output an analog signal and I haven't done this before. I'm doing this live. So I hope it really works, but let's exit. Let's exit out of this program. I want to just show you. When you go to the utility and you go to the acorn wizard, there's this spindle section up here. I hope my screen's in focus where it, you know, I've defined my spindle max speed and high range to be 3000 RPM and the spindle min range I've defined to be zero. So I'm going to try turning the spindle to 3000 RPM and hope to see 10 volts on that voltmeter. Then we'll try like 1500 and see if we're right and see if it's half of that. So let's go to manual spindle control on the acorn. 
Uh, and the other thing is, is the VFD and motor, I've disconnected them from power. So we might be outputting a signal, but we're not going to hear the motor turn on because I've sort of disconnected everything. So let's take the spindle out of auto mode and I'm going to start the spindle and we're going to see what happens to the voltmeter. Here we go. Okay. So we got 0.55 volts on the analog pin. That didn't do exactly what I was expecting. When we kick it off, we get zero. Let's make sure we got the right settings here. And are we on DC? Yeah, we're on DC. Okay, so we're wrong. We're wrong about that one. Now it did kick the spindle, the, the, the M3 relay on, so that's good. But running the spindle at 100%, the voltage is jumping a little bit, but I think it's uh, that's actually not right. Let's try running a program and see what happens. Okay, let's. we got our program loaded up, that thing that just runs a square. So we'll go back to spindle auto. Let's, now let's, sorry for the glare, guys. All right, now let's try running this program. Okay, the machine's moving. Okay, and now we're actually, we are getting 10 volts. So that's good. But why wouldn't it give me 10 volts when I was controlling the spindle manually. All right, I'm gonna call that a win, <laughs> even though I don't know what's going on, but we are getting 10 volts, more or less 10 volts. We're off a little bit. Okay, so now the part's done machining and let's see when the spindle shuts off, we're getting zero volts. Okay, that's good. So what's going on with the speed? Let's go back into manual and see if we can't bump things around here. Okay, we're back in auto, we're back in manual spindle mode. We're gonna start the spindle. Okay, the relay kicked on, that's good. Let's increase the speed. Okay, so I'm increasing, oh, I see, because my spindle wasn't at 3000 RPM. All right, see, I've never, I've never actually seen this screen before. So yeah, as I'm clicking up, the volts go to 10. All right, sweet, so that's a win. That's a win. I've never even noticed this part of the centroid screen because I don't control my spindle with it. So awesome. Okay, so now all we've got to do is connect that signal into the VFD. And right now on the VFD, I've got the speed set to 60 hertz. It's just I have it in like, uh, you know, I've defined the frequency I want the motor to run at and it'll always run at that frequency. So there's a parameter we have to change that will put it into like analog mode where instead of listening to the set, you know, the set frequency that I defined, it's going to listen on the control pins for a frequency at what to control the motor, um, what to control the motor with. I'm going to go to the manual of the VFD. We're going to look at what parameter we need to change. And then we're going to go ahead and connect some leads between the acorn. So instead of using these analog, uh, you know, instead of having a voltmeter here, we're going to have those leads go directly into the VFD on the right pins. So we'll do that and we'll be right back. All right, so in the manual for this VFD, this is the parameter we have to change to have analog control. So you can see here that by default, the frequency setting method, so the, the factory defaults are in this column, so we've got a zero. So by default, we control the frequency with this option. So it's keypad setting one. And that setting is actually set up here. So like, that's the thing is with these VFDs, generally, from what I understand, that all the important parameters kind of at the top, they're like the first ones that you definitely want to go through and set. You can dig in, it's amazing what these things can do. And, and the section is huge. Like it's, it's like, it's over a hundred pages of parameters. And, um, I, instead of finding it intimidating, it's more of like it, you know, you set the important ones. I, I was up and running. I only set like four or five parameters. And you know what, if I set none of them, it would probably still run. It was just, you know, I wanted to protect the VFD a little bit. I I'm running the, a two horse motor with a 10 horse VFD. So I wanted to set like current limits because that VFD will fry that motor. If the motor tries drawing the current, the VFD won't stop it until we, you know, set a limit. But um, it really, it'll just kind of run out of the box. And, and I, I set parameters sort of one by one and I start narrowing in on things that I think I want. So at the manual here, we are controlling right now the frequency just digitally through the keypad, but we want to switch to analog and we have two, three, four, five, six, four, sorry, five options, two, three, four, five, six, 
Um, the first option is controlling it with minus 10 to plus 10 volts, which we don't have. Like if we go over here to the centroid schematic, we can see right here that that analog pin, it puts out zero to 10 VDC. So it's putting out zero to 10 volts, not minus 10 to plus 10 volts. And uh, so we know it's not this one. And then the third option is zero to 10 volts. That looks like what we want, but what are our other options? We can do the current, we can send it zero to 20 milliamps. So we can also control the VFD with current, which the, the center, the, the acorn doesn't do, it uses voltage. So this still looks like the best one. Then we have terminal V1 setting one plus terminal I. So that's the current terminal. So I guess I have no idea what that means. Terminal, the voltage terminal setting one plus the current terminal. I don't know. And terminal V1 setting two plus terminal I. Yeah, I got no idea what that means. So I am going to throw a dart at this one here. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to change this FRQ parameter in the VFD. We're going to change it to number three so that the, the, the motor is listening or sorry, the VFD is listening to the V1 pin for zero to 10 volts. And that's when it'll set the frequency. Now, what the max frequency is going to be, I'm not really quite sure, but we're going to find out. We're going to take the V out. So there's a common, those two pins, there, one of them is a common and one of them is a V out. And that's going to go to a common terminal on the VFD and like an analog voltage in terminal on the VFD. And if we go back to the manual... Right here, okay. V1 is the frequency setting voltage signal input. So V1 is is, is waiting, is, is listening to a signal and it can take in anywhere from minus 10 to 10, but we're gonna set the parameter where it's gonna be looking from zero to 10. And then we should have a common. We should, here we go. So CM is input signal common. So the, the centroid common is gonna go to this CM pin. And we can see here that there, there are a few CM pins, but they're connected. So it doesn't matter which one we go to. So we'll, we'll connect the centroid common to this one and we'll connect the frequency setting voltage input signal to, um, V1 to the, uh, V analog out on the acorn. I'm going to change those settings. I'm going to make those connections. We're going to come back and see what we get. All right. So we've got the analog pin wired into the VFD. So the analog out from the acorn is going to V1 and the common is going to analog common. Let's turn on the, uh, the VFD. And I still have to put in that parameter. So the parameter that's going to allow us to run it we, we want to control the frequency with an analog signal and we want to do from zero to 10 volts. So we have to go to our parameter FRQ and change it to number three. There is FRQ. We, it's set to zero. So we want to change that. We are going to go to three. We accept it. And if we go and check, we go back in. Yeah, it's set to three. So that's looking good. Now let's go back here. And that is, uh, okay. So that's interesting. It's already working. I think those numbers are jumping around on the VFD because we have some residual voltage in that pin. Okay, cool. We're going to go to, we got manual spindle control. And it looks like I'm at 1000 RPM on the spindle as soon as I hit go. So we should expect a third of 10 volts. You know, we're going to be able to work that out. Let's turn it on. That's good. It runs. Okay. And a thousand RPM or sorry, yeah, a thousand RPM. We are outputting about 20 Hertz, which is perfect because we're at one third of our max. So that's all making sense. Let's go up on the spindle. All right, well, that's working exactly the way we need it to. So awesome, we're winning, except it says 50, it says 50 Hertz and I'm at a hundred percent because when we're at max RPM, we should, I think be at 60 Hertz, not 50. So let's see how we can change that. All right, that was painful, but we figured it out. When we look at the way that the analog signal works on this VFD, 
So we have, you know, this V1 going from zero to 10 volts. And the first thing is some kind of analog input filter. And I don't know what that means yet, but here's this analog input scale. And so it scales the signal to some level. And it was really looking like it was doing that. So it tells us that this is controlled by parameters I2 to I15. And when we go to I2 to I15, I10 turns out to be, you know, sets the inverter output maximum frequency at maximum positive voltage of I9. So the maximum positive voltage, we get 50 hertz. So changing this to 70, I also made sure that F21 was set to 70. And then there are these couple other parameters that are here, F25 and F26. This is where you can set the frequency low limit and frequency frequency high limit. And so I made sure that all the high limits were at 70. And I don't exactly know which one it's listening to, but we are getting what we want. So if we go back into the control and we start the spindle. Okay, the spindle kicks on. And I've got it on the wrong screen on that other camera here. Let me change it. So we're monitoring current right now, but we actually... We don't want to be doing that. We want to be, oops, sorry. We want to be measuring, okay, so there we go. That's the frequency. So we can see right now my spindle speed, out of 3000, I'm at 1050. So we're at uh, 30 hertz. And as I climb the speed, We can see we get to 70 hertz on the VFD when I'm at 3000. And so that's really good. And all this 3000 means, from what I understand, is that this 3000 is giving that analog pin the full 10 volts. So we're definitely not spinning at 3000. Uh, this is an uh, 1800 RPM motor and it's spinning at 70 hertz. So, you know, we're, we're somewhere over 2000, but we're, we're definitely not at 3000. But all this means that we're giving it a full 10 volts. And so we can easily work out, you know, if we know the RPM on the VFD, which we can do, by the way, we can monitor the RPM. Uh, as soon as we know the, the max RPM on the VFD at 10 volts, we can set that in the Acorn Wizard by going to Utility, Acorn Wizard. And then here on the Spindle Setup screen, we can just tell it the Spindle max speed in high, in high range. So... When we know the max speed of the VFD at the full 10 volts, we'll just enter that here. And I think, I think that'll take care of it. I think we'll then be reading an accurate voltage up here. Uh, another cool thing I want to show you guys is if we, instead of monitoring the frequency that we were doing that whole time, we can actually monitor the current. So right now with the VFD off, we're getting, you know, we, we're drawing zero amps. And let's go ahead and lower the speed before we start the spindle to about half to like 1500. And this is just 1500 in the control. So this is probably somewhere around five volt. Yeah, five volts on the analog pin. So we'll start the spindle. And we can see we're drawing like 3.2 amps on the VFD. And as I increase that all the way to 70, that doesn't really change. You know, no load on the motor. But even as we go all the way up to 70, we uh, the current actually falls off to two and a half amps. So those of you that know more about motors than I do, maybe you can comment on that because uh, does that mean the torque is falling off or why does the current start dropping at higher RPMs? And if I go even higher than that, am I gonna lose a significant amount of torque? Because one of my, kind of one of the things I'm thinking about right now is getting a two pole motor instead of this four pole motor so my at 60 hertz, I'm going to be at around 3,600 RPM. And then I want to step that up to the spindle somewhere between five, six, seven thousand, 7,000 or something like that. Um, but I want to do that. If I'm running the spindle that fast, I want it to be kind of in the most optimal torque area. And I, I don't know what that is. I know there's a torque curve. I don't know what it is for the motor I'm getting. Um, and I don't know if there's like, if I'm losing anything by going with a two pole instead of using a four pole and going with pulleys. I don't think I am. I don't even know why I'm saying that. I have no idea. So if somebody knows, I'd really appreciate a comment. Um, but that's looking really good. Okay. So we're happy with that. We've got our spindle control. And now I want to see if there's a way we can monitor RPM. 
What are we doing here? What are we? Well, current. There we go. RPM. So let's do that. Okay. So now we're in RPM monitoring mode. Let's start the spindle back up. And we've got a reading on the VFD of 1560. We're going about 1560 RPM. Let's go to the max. So this is the max of 3000 here, meaning we're getting 10 volts out of the analog pin and the VFD is spinning at exactly 2100 RPM. Yeah, 2100 RPM. So, okay, if we kick the spindle off, we go to utility, Acorn Wizard, we should be able, here instead of 3000, let's hit 2100. Let's go to write these settings. Okay, setting save, be sure to close and restart CNC 12. That's great. So we don't have to restart the actual board. We just have to restart the controller or the software. Let's get back into CNC 12 here and let's go ahead. All right, great. So here, look at spindle max. You know, see this red is all the way up when I, when I decrease the speed of the spindle, you see that line moving down, but at max at the full 10 volts, now our max reading is 2100. So let's compare this screen to the RPM monitor on the VFD. Let's start it. We're going all the way to max. So we know max is working. Uh, let's drop it off a little bit randomly. I'm going to 1575. And on the VFD screen, I've got 1672. So we are 100 RPM off. Now, is that normal? It might be, I have no idea. Now I am at uh, 1029 on the Acorn. And on the VFD, we're at 1146. So. Again, we're about 100 RPM off. Let's drop it way down. Okay, we're at 409 on the Acorn and 546 on the VFD. And I might want to do that bench test again because I think that's what the analog, that Centroid analog bench test, I think that's what it does is it outputs some voltages from the controller and you kind of enter them. Uh, you enter what those voltages are. Now, I wonder, was my voltmeter, maybe it's, it's a Mastercraft, that's a Canadian tire or like a Harbor Freight brand, it, really super low quality um, meter. So I may, I've got some electrician friends, I may grab like a fluke meter from one of them and see if I recalibrate, you know, if I do that spindle bench test again, will it make a difference? But for now, I'm really happy with that. Being 100 RPM off, I can't say that I care that much. Um, I'm again, I'm not going to be rigid tapping with any of this. So that, that shouldn't really matter if I'm off by a hundred RPM. All right. So the last thing we want to do between the VFD and the CNC controller is somehow find a way to get the VFD to send the controller a signal when there's a fault. So like if something happens with the spindle, the CNC control is going to know about it and it will kick everything off and put everything into like a, into an e-stop mode. And it looks like we do that here. So the multifunction output terminal and relay. So we want to program the relay to flip when there's a fault. And it looks like we can do that. If we program parameter I55 to be 17, then in the event of a fault output, we are, uh, we're going to get a trip of this relay. And okay, it looks like we're getting lucky here because the factory default is 17. So I'll double check that, but it looks like we're good here. So, and I just got to find a way to fake a fault. And the easiest way I can think of to generate a fault in the VFD is to set our, uh, set the overload current parameter really low. So if we look at, is it F57? This parameter sets the amount of overload current. The value percentage is, okay, it's a percentage of H33. So H33 was our full load amps, um, which is 5.9 on this guy, on this motor. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this, it looks like I can set it anywhere between 30 and 200. So I'm gonna set it to 30. And then for F58, F58 is what actually fires the alarm. This parameter turns off the inverter when the current greater than the F57 overload trip level, which is what we just set. So we set it to 30% of 5.9. And um, when when that's exceeded for this number of seconds, so F, S, F58 uh, sets the number of seconds before it'll trip. So the number of seconds of current above this level before it trips. And we can set from zero to 60 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna set this one to like two. I'm gonna set this to 30. So F57 to 30, F58 to two. And let's see if we can't generate um, an overload current warning in this thing. 
Okay, so we've got all our overload levels set in the VFD. So we set the overload current real low. And off screen, I did some quick math that 30% of 5.9 is like 1.77. And we know that the current sits steady at about 3 point something when it's running. So we're expecting to turn on this, uh, turn on the spindle and two seconds later, if we've done anything right, we're gonna see an overload. Let's give it a shot. Hit cycle start, or spindle start. All right, nice. So we got a fall. Yeah, we got an overload trip, so that's perfect. Well, let's get out the multimeter and uh, probe around. Let's take a look and just test that the normally open contacts are in fact normally open and normally closed or normally closed. Then we will wire that into the centroid acorn so it knows that we get a fault. All right, so now when we get a fault in the VFD of any kind, we should get some kind of action out of this relay. So the three contacts out of the relay are 3A, 3B, and 3C. I hope you can see that from uh, one of these camera angles here. But uh, so, you know, one of these is common and the other two are normally open, normally closed, just like any other relay. So I've got my voltmeter here and I'm gonna check for continuity. So you can hear that. Let's see what's what, what's normally open and what's normally closed here. Okay, so there's no continuity anywhere. That is not good. Hmm. So this is a used VFD, which is why the price was so right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull that board off. This here is the relay. That's the actual relay that the VFD is firing. Sorry, that's in your way. This here is the actual relay. And if we get underneath, under this board, we should be able to see if something is damaged, if it's repairable. Maybe we can swap out the relay because I can't see anything from the top here. Okay. All right, it's hard to do all this holding a camera. But let's see what we can get at here. All right, so we got to get this board out of this plastic tray. Here we go. Ooh, yeah, there's the problem. So I hope you can see that. Sorry, that right under my thumb. So, man, this viewfinder is so small, it's hard to see what, hard to tell what you can and can't see. But for sure, there's no continuity between the board and the relay, so that explains that. All right, well, not what we were hoping to find, but that's all making sense, and we are not as stupid as we look. So I guess I'm gonna take this in and see if it can be repaired. I might be able to get like a fault out of a different pin, but I don't think I can. That pin's what's meant for sending faults, so I don't know that I'm gonna be able to do that with something else. So that kind of sucks, but that's okay. So that's really too bad. At the beginning of this video, I said I wanted to um, to do three things. You know, send an analog out out of the acorn, send a digital out out of the acorn, and send a digital to the acorn from the VFD. And we're not going to be able to do that last part. We're not going to be able to send a signal from the VFD to the acorn. But I'm still going to call this a win. What I really need the motor to do, if I'm going to use it as a spindle motor, is I need to be able to turn it on, I need to be able to tell it how fast to run, and I need to be able to tell it to shut off. And we can do that. And not only that, uh, we can do it wirelessly. So this is the centroid pendant. And um, I can go ahead and tell the spindle to start. And if I've got my spindle selected here, on this selector switch, I can change the speed of it. So I'm calling that a win. That's pretty cool. We'll try to take it in and get it repaired, but um, yeah, I'd call that a success. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.